I'm James Yardley, and today I'm joined by Scott McKenzie, Elite Rated Manager of the TB Marty UK Listed Smaller Companies Fund. Thank you very much for joining us, Scott. Thank you, James. Great to be here. Uh, Scott, it's, I guess it's been a, a pretty tough time for UK smaller companies uh, at the moment. They always seem to be in the eye of the storm whenever there's a crisis. Um, so has this made them cheap or uh, attractive at the moment? And um, w- what are you seeing on the ground? Yeah, you, you're right. It's been a really difficult period for, for small companies and inve- investors in general. Uh, you know, if you look over the past 12 months, there's been quite material falls in, in the main small cap indices. And, and AIM itself is also down you know, over 30% in the past 12 months. So we really have had a, a dramatic change of fortune uh, as, as small company investors. Um, yeah, and I think the, the issues we're facing here in the UK are also you know, quite tricky in terms of domestic politics, rising bond yields, rising interest rates. So uh, it feels like it's been a kind of perfect storm. Um, I think from our perspective as small cap investors, you know, we are now seeing some really great opportunities as a result of this. Um, and a lot of the companies that we invest in, you know, have seen material falls in their valuations. Uh, and that's given us an opportunity now to, you know, selectively increase the holdings, particularly in companies that we already know very well. Um, you know, so for example, some of the, the software businesses we own, companies such as Craneware and Spirant, you know, those are companies we've been adding to our holdings in, uh, and those have the benefit of having dollar earnings as well at a time you know, where sterling's under pressure. So it's a tricky market, uh, but we, we see some really great opportunities and some some high quality businesses now. So do you think the market's being quite inefficient in, in some of these cases, as you say, those are two examples which are actually dollar earners and obviously with the pound having come down so much i mean I, i'm expecting they're probably their their revenues and earnings are probably looking quite good so uh, are you finding lots of those inefficiencies at the moment do you have any other examples you can share with us yeah i mean uh, i think you know the starting point was that a lot of businesses you know ha- had become quite expensive you know going back a year 18 months ago uh, and what was seen a our valuation falls across the board from you know, high growth companies to also to, to cyclical companies as well. Uh, and I guess the problem you have with the more cyclical companies is their earnings are now under extreme pressure you know, as a result of inflation uh, and potential economic slowdown. Uh, I guess the good thing about some of the, the more structural growth companies is that they have less earnings pressure and therefore you know, the valuations falls that we've seen, you, you can hang your hat on them somewhat more easily than you can with cyclical companies. Um, yep. So you know, we, we are, our, our modus operandi within the fund is really to try and focus on buying the highest quality companies at the best possible prices. Uh, and I think that's kind of where we are today. You know, we've got far more opportunity to do that. Uh, and I mentioned, you know, Cranware Inspirant, Gamma is another company that we've been investing in, a communications company. Uh, and we're also investing in some of the, the, the companies that are geared towards financial markets. You know, clearly we've seen some very significant sell-offs in financial markets. Uh, so companies such as Rathbones in the, the wealth management field will be adding to our holdings there. Uh, and more recently, Polar Capital, you know, uh, again, a, a, a really strong you know, active fund management business that we, we've known for some time. So there are opportunities not just within the growth sectors, but also in some of the, the financial sectors as well. And um, what are you seeing on the M&A front at the moment, obviously, with sterling being very weak now? I mean, is that bringing in a lot of overseas buyers for some of these businesses? Um, And also, what does that mean for you? I mean, do you see that as an opportunity or do you find some of your sort of better ideas sort of being stolen away from you? Well, the, 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 there is there has indeed been a significant increase in M&A activity during the course of this year. Uh, that started towards the end of last year, and we've now seen, I think I was reading some data from uh, Numis this morning, there's been approximately $60 billion of bid activity in the UK market already in 2022. Um, and we have seen some of that in our portfolio. We've had five companies already having received bid approaches in the current year. Uh, and some of them have, have already left the portfolio. Um, so, for example, we had HomeServe uh, just a few months ago. Uh, we had a smaller business called Air Partners. Uh, and we've also had more recently Euromoney, uh, which, all of which have now been sold from the portfolio. So, you know, we do have a challenge to, to replace these businesses. 
But you know, given that we're in you know, what is essentially a bear market at the moment, uh, there are more opportunities to replace the businesses that we're losing uh, at more attractive valuations than, than would be the case you know, in, in a bull market. So we do think the M&A theme is here to stay. I, I think your observation about overseas acquirers is absolutely valid. Uh, and obviously the, the weakness that we've seen in sterling you know, makes the UK even more attractive from an overseas buyer's perspective. So we definitely would expect to see you know continuing M&A uh, as, as a major theme within the, the UK market. And you filter out um, companies for various red flags. Can you talk us through a little bit about what sort of uh, what that means? I mean, are these are these ESG concerns and things you have, um, or, or is it something else? Um, I mean, the, the, the two big ones that we're, we're really focusing on at the moment, I'll, I'll come back to ESG in a second, but the, the two major ones that we're looking at at the portfolio just now are the strength of the balance sheet and the strength of the profit margin. Um, so we're taking quite a lot of care to make sure that the, the companies we invest in have got very strong balance sheets. Uh, most of the companies we own within the fund actually have net cash. Uh, and we think that's very important in an environment where things are likely to get worse before they get better. You know, the economic outlook will, will almost certainly deteriorate from here. You know, and with that, companies' earnings are also set to come under significant pressure you know, as inflation continues to be very, very high. Obviously, we've got an energy crisis, a uh, fuel crisis, and that impacts companies as well as individuals. Um, so you know, the earnings outlook in the short term is, is, is poor. We cannot deny that. Um, but we do firmly believe that companies with strong balance sheets are well placed to weather that storm. You know, and when things get pretty ugly, they can actually take advantage of opportunity, having the cash to do so. So I would say balance sheet strength is, is a key thing that we look for. Uh, and the have second, you actually sold some holdings then because perhaps they were a bit more highly geared? Obviously, now interest rates rising. Uh, I mean, it's getting harder and harder for companies to fund themselves, but we haven't had to worry about it for so long because of quantitative easing. Um, so we are in a different environment. Uh, have you sold some holdings on the back of that? Uh, well, the, the main area where there has been concern on this this kind of front uh, are in the more consumer-facing sectors. Mm -hmm. uh, your retailers and your travel and leisure companies, th those are companies which are really in the eye of the storm and you know, things are, are set to get considerably worse for those types of sectors. So we have reduced our exposure to retail in particular. Um, and you know, we sold a couple of actually quite good companies, companies like Denelm, for example, perfectly good business, but we just don't see how these kind of companies can buck the trend forever. Uh, we don't hold anything in travel and leisure within the fund. So that's at least you know something that we've avoided and would continue to avoid. Um, so th th those are just a couple of the examples of the things we've been doing more recently. And it also goes back to my second point about the, the profit margins within the businesses that we own. It's really, really important that we invest in companies that have got high profit margins and high returns because yeah. what, what we find in a downturn is the companies with the smallest profit margins are the first to be affected and you know, their mm. profits profits can disappear very, very quickly. And that's one of the reasons why you know, retail is, is, remains a pretty vulnerable sector. Are you finding that across the board at the moment? Obviously, it is a challenging environment with depressed consumer sentiment and obviously higher costs because of inflation as well. Are, are margins, you know, holding up across the portfolio? I mean, as you said, you, you're starting with higher margins in your case. So I guess you're, you're mm. probably slightly better positioned than the wider market, hopefully. That's what we believe, you know, that that's why we structured the portfolio that way, um, you know, to have companies which have inbuilt resilience. Uh, you know, generally speaking, if companies have high profit margins, it means they've got you know, sustainability to their business and a robustness to their business that, that lower margin businesses typically don't have. So we feel that structuring it that way gives us you know, a very good chance of avoiding the worst. Uh, that's not to say we will not get caught you know, uh, with earnings downturns like every other fund, but no. we, we, we certainly think we, it gives ourselves you know, a, a real fighting chance of coming out of this you know, much better than if we didn't have them. So I think those two things are important. Uh, you, you mentioned the, the ESG angle as well. Uh, I mean, our, our view in the ESG is relatively straightforward. We very much approach it on a bottom-up basis. Uh, and we, we, we really take a lot of time to engage with the companies individually. 
what we don't do uh, have box ticking exercises across the fund. We yeah. don't believe that works, you know. And to give you some small examples, you know, going back a year ago, we were under pressure to divest of oil companies and divest of defence companies, you know, for ESG mm-hmm. concerns, you know. And I think we all know what's happened since, you know, the, the situation with Ukraine has really turned that completely on its head. Uh, and you know, and I'm kind of reasonably happy that we, we kept those investments. You know, and they've they've helped us. You know, kind of weather some of the recent storms. So I think the ESG thing can be too prescriptive, and our approach is just to treat every company, you know, as a, as a special case. Yeah, no, fair enough. Uh, and just finally, then, so um, I believe you're holding a bit of cash back at the moment. So are you hoping for some uh, more opportunities in the second half of the year? Yes, uh, I mean the, the approach to liquidity within the fund. We, we do tend to have a keep a small, you know, cash holding of you know circa three percent most of the time. Uh, at the moment, it's closer to five percent. Uh, we also have a couple of companies which are subject to takeover bids. Uh, I referred to a moment ago, um, you know, and all going well, those will become cash, you know, in the months ahead. So you know, we've, we've typically got between you know, say five and seven percent, you know, cash to deploy. Um, you know, and we, the question for us is, you know, when do we do that? Really, um, you know, we're now at the phase of the market. We believe that you know we're now seeing earnings adjustments, and those are going to be you know quite difficult across a number of sectors. So we're we're not overly concerned about valuation per se. We, we've seen a lot of change in valuation already. The, the, the current concern is mainly to do with the earnings outlook and you know obviously the threat of recession. So we're watching it very closely, but the, the key thesis for us is to just keep investing in high quality businesses that have been you know devalued. That, that is our key theme for, for the investments that we're making. And ideally they're out with the UK. You know, we're, we're typically buying companies with dollar earnings you know, that, that I referred to earlier, th- those types of things. Fantastic, Scott. Well, really good to get your insights. That's been really interesting. Thank you very much for joining us today. You're very welcome. Thank you. And if you'd like to learn more about the TBMRT UK listed smaller companies fund, please visit fundcaliber.com. And please remember to subscribe to the channel as well.